previously in the world of Galmora. I'm gonna put my finger in the black hole. <laughs> <laughs> I, took I my shouldn't finger. stick my hand in there, however. <laughs> and Cress now dies. <laughs> you stick your finger. <laughs> I mean, I would say all the bones in that finger were crushed. I would think it just deleted your finger. <laughs> oh no, my finger's gone. Did, did you just speak common? Or didn't, sorry, you didn't speak that common. Did you just understand common? Like, can you understand me? What the heck is a common? Can you understand me? Yes. Okay, that's cool. She understands common now, but that is not common falling out of a face. That is still draconic. Okay, cool. So we can talk to Caleb now. I want to work on a disguise. Oh. Okay. I, I want to, I want to make a disguise to where I look older and different. You know how I'm dressing down and making myself look younger? I want to be able to, to look older and with a different hair color. I don't care which one, but I want to be able to look different and older. And I'm obsessively watching Quarkus. I am learning his routine. Um, guys, you should really say what you want to Quarkus. Just, just <laughs> you know, if you have any last words. <laughs> Does Quarkus continue to fish in that really weird way he was doing the last time we were on the ship? Yes, okay. he does. I I can't help this man. If he's going to die, he's going to die. I think, yeah, yeah I think this point. take a bye to him. When he, like, sits down at that desk one night, he, like, takes a locket from around his neck, and, like, he clicks on it to open it up. He's looking at some sort of picture, and you can hear him say... I wish you guys could see me now. <laughs> They'll be I seeing mean, you soon, buddy. You notice, like, a weird number of those ladybugs are starting to, like, accumulate on the bottom side of one of these, like, platforms that's being lowered down. You see a halfling standing at the edge, and he calls down to you. Corcus, is that you? You see Corcus freeze up. Oh, God damn it. Not him. Perfect. Looks like made it! Woo! Love tits. <laughs> Oh god. Can't Guys, there's a few technical difficulties. Uh, the first Briar's... thing that they heard was loved hits. <laughs> uh, I hope all of you have had a great week so far. Oh, I just realized I had the volume of the stream on the stream. What are your favorite pair of tits? Oh god. Uh, Briar muted wow. himself right at the start. Uh, 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 hello, hello, chat. Hi. Hi, I'm alive. Okay. I can hear myself now. Wonderful. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Untold Realms Path of Destruction. Session 9. I know numbers. Hello. <laughs> Can't believe. Can I please have one fucking stream without scuff? I would really appreciate that. No, it's part of the ritual of doing a stream. There Damn have it. Some technical problems. <laughs> Damn it. I hate this. Anyway, uh, of course, all of my filters aren't working. That's fun. Ooh. And also, I'm really loud. What the shit? Oh, that's why they're not working, because I'm loud. Huh. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think I've got it, hopefully. Um... Okay, yeah. Technical yep, I've got it. I've got it. We're good. I've got this. Uh, you know, I'm just gonna throw it to makeshift and we're gonna get started, because I think if I say anything else, everything's just gonna fucking explode. Word. So, uh, important detail about the story. So, in the Discord that we all have for, like, talking about the campaign and stuff, uh, there was a little while ago where I was like, yeah, there's probably like four sessions left or something, and that was like 
one session ago. I was writing down my notes for this session, and I realized, hmm, uh, I'm very quickly running out of story here, so uh, this is very likely probably the end. I have like one and a half sessions worth of content left, and we could pretty easily get through that in the session, so this is most likely the going last session. Going to be a session. longer session. Yeah. And this is most likely going to be the last one. So, like, if there's any moment where your characters are, like, riding off into the sunset, just know that is, like, uh, story is spiraling very quickly to an end right now, uh, as I discovered when I was taking my notes. So, a uh, little heads up for the whole team here. Stay on but, target. Uh, Stay on yeah. target. So, anyway. Uh... Oh, and in that same vein, I'm going to have to uh, slightly retcon uh, Cress's presence in the story, which is, I don't know, if, if we end up not having another session at the end of this one, I'll just say that, uh, it, I don't know, he, he got killed by the explosion from the car or something. But, or uh, Mania could Until we get to that point, I'll confirm that when I do all the story wrap-ups for everybody. <laughs> and also burp really quickly, because I just drank some water. Don't die. And so, uh, where are we? Tower. Indeed. And so, the party stands at the base of the Tower of Githmantis, or the city of Githmantis, which is just one really big tower with a lot of uh, people living on it. And uh, the halfling uh, Willerin, uh, seemingly in some sort of nemesis of Corcus, has just departed. Uh, giving a warning to Corcus, at the very least, to stay far away from the tower and just take this one instance of one instance of, of him being willing to cut him some slack. Show mercy, that's what I'm thinking of. It took me a minute to th remember that word. What are words? What is and mercy? So, uh, apparently something that very few D&D characters understand. Correct. And so... Actually, good point. I I just got some very important pointed out to me, which is uh, the characters need to know what exactly happened to Chris if they're going to be acting. All I'm saying uh, is Mania could kill him. I could kill every one of you if you wanted me to. Politely not. I, I have... No. <laughs> what do you mean you don't want to have your head chopped off by an axe? Uh, Everyone wants that. The horn blows, does the driver. <laughs> yep, that was my neighbor's awesome. <laughs> uh, I guess for the sake of storytelling purposes, I'm gonna have to say, yeah, like you saw the smoldering like lump of like stone at the base of this tower, and uh, you can only assume Crest was probably inside it, as uh, it is just kind of burning. It seems like there's a humanoid in it. Uh, and you'll well, also just witness. <laughs> Fucking idiot. <laughs> Oof. And now they're repping an engine. Let me uh, quickly close my window. <laughs> great, great time to be uh, showing off their I motorized vehicles. I thought the Subaru vehiculars. was blown up. <laughs> Literally. The Subaru. <laughs> the mount's right outside my window. And so, uh, you all just saw that halfling uh, very clearly threaten Corcus and then just kind of peace out and say, that don't, don't come to the city. Just, just leave, Corcus. And uh, that was basically where he left it off. And so, what? Uh, what do you all do? Is you're you're standing there at the base. You got that uh, smoldering lump of stone next to you, and uh, you just got that very clear warning. Uh, We're totally going to ignore the warning, right? Well, I am. I don't know if, uh... I can't I believe he died in such a stupid way. Oh, absolutely. I'm gonna really... have to roll to kill Quarkus right now. I'm gonna <laughs> have to roll as a surprise <laughs> attack on Quarkus. I'm sorry. The fuck? The, the halfling who is, who is standing yeah. in... <laughs> can I try to... Well, can even... I try to stop her? Well, first, um... Can try. Give You're me a d20 to to roll. Kill me. Hold on, I'm give pulling me, it up right now. <laughs> give me a d20 roll, just to see if he's even, if you're in his line of sight right now. 
All right. And just to, just to, you know, do you still need Canary at this part in the, or like, is there anything else that's important that you need Canary? I for? mean, I just would wondering? appreciate her being because, there. Because I mean, she's going to have to probably it. kill her pretty soon. She's going to become feral. Cress was like uh, the last thing don't... that she started actually caring about, and now he's dead. So, and she blames Corcus. So <laughs> she blames Corcus for a car Cora gave him that he she bought himself. All of you. She hates what? All of you. She blames all of you. Oh my <laughs> gosh! I had no idea that Corcus was a car. You're gonna have to kill her probably, <laughs> or at least blames it on yeah. Corcus. Well, uh, don't because forget. Uh, he would have never had the car if not is... for the adventure that you took him on. Lovesick, it is worth remembering the whole idea behind the campaign was that your characters, I like, the, the value behind it is to get two, like, three wishes. So you I could know. just wish for him back once you get to the top of the tower. She's gonna be in a blind rage. Good luck. <laughs> what the fuck is She's happening right now? Rage. What luck. the fuck uh, is happening? Off into the races one of her. <laughs> real fast. A six. Yeah. I thought... I thought I was actually going to do this whole thing, but I can I can do this. You this can thing restrain right. her, but she's going to be actually, in a blind rage. <laughs> oh, I there's happily. actually a fucking ice cream truck outside my window. What the fuck? Ooh, Why? Heard... Perfect back, perfect boss music. <laughs> actually, <laughs> this session is so cursed. What yeah. the fuck is? Can I ask you to stop? Like, what the fuck is happening? Nice. Yeah, ice cream truck, what is occurring? Anyway, give me a d20 roll to see if she you're did. even it's in a, a position. I already did. Ice cream murder. Oh. Six. He is very much so. He he can see where you are. All right. So are you just going to, like, yeah. lunge for him? Yeah, yeah. you can restrain her, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I would like to jump in and stop her. All right, let's see. <laughs> you're going to you're gonna have to stop her. Yeah, I am going to have to so stop her. Funny. Uh, makeshift, what role would be best for this for me to fucking stop her? A, uh, a grapple with oh, strength. I have the grappler feet. You're getting fucking restrained. Anyway. Good luck. <laughs> for the rest I'm of literally me. strength <laughs> is my highest is back, I have the grappler feet. I'm bigger than you. I'm gonna stop you. You're gonna have yeah. to. <laughs> Uh, yeah, plus three. Yeah. The only way this could yeah. fail is getting a nat one. If you give me a fucking nat one, you piece of shit dice, I swear to god I will throw you away. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> Motivating the dice! <laughs> first of all, I just want to put that. So I have advantage currently. Oh no, wait, I have to be mm -hmm. grappling her first. My apologies. I'm not, I do not have advantage. Here we go! Grapple check. Yeah, that's a dirty 20. Hmm. And so... We take those. Uh, how's your... When you try and attack Corcus, do you just lunge at him? Yeah, teeth first. Teeth first, okay. Yeah. I thought I was going to have more time to think of how to do this voice, but... <laughs> A screech would, would work. As you, <laughs> as you lunge towards uh, Corcus... Actually, it, I'm gonna say Mania just manages to grab you. Can I shove some wood inside works. of her mouth? You're gonna have to. <laughs> Can I stay? So she bites onto the wood. You're gonna have to, because she's gonna be bitey. <laughs> you can bite me to. all you want. I'm kind of into it. Okay, like. Oh my god. <laughs> hey yo. <laughs> all right. Uh. Well, Mania wraps her arm around Canary's waist and- Want I just want her to bite onto wood like I just thrust a log of wood into her mouth. Sure, why not? Um, mm -hmm. Mania just wraps her, wraps her arm around Canary's waist and pulls her back against her chest and Khaled thrusts a log in her mouth. Um, I would like to lean into Canary and just go, you fucking idiot. If you get us all killed right here, I swear to God, I will haunt you in the afterlife. Do not fuck this up. Canary is thrashing and, 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 and. You're also grappling. Still trying to get to Corcus. Mm -hmm. Oh no, totally. Yeah, good. I'm not sure. She, she's trying to get away. I know that the, she can't, but 
that's that's her. You can certainly try. <laughs> so However, I do have yeah. the grappler feet. I have advantage mm-hmm. on all rolls against you right now. All strength rolls you, against you. You struggle more and more against uh, the pretty pretty firm grasp and arms of uh, Mania. But uh, and you also get like a like a a sizable like piece of wood like put inside your mouth and you kind of chomp down on it. As just sort of like Nezuko in Demon Slayer. That was a bamboo shoot. But, uh, Eek, oh god. Almost as Kayla just kind of like, yeah, just kind of like reaches it towards you and sticks that in your mouth. And just, ah. But then, as, as you're kind of struggling and uh, you're becoming frantic, you notice something odd, Canary. Mm. Is that the air seems to be. Yeah, something seems oddly quiet right now through the the frantic struggling. But the air seems to have gone rather still, and as you're looking up, you realize that Mania seems to be like statue still. Like her her grip was strong before, but there was like some some cushion, I guess, some some movement to the the flesh. But now it's like they turned to stone. It seems the glance. Everybody around you has just halted their movement entirely. She looks around to see why. You look around, but again, it seems like people are mid-motion, mouths open as if they were talking, and it's as if time has like come to a complete halt for just a moment. And then you notice... That there is some movement. That as the the airs flutter, that you see some fluttering through the air. The, these tiny red spots, and one of them uh, like lands on like Caleb's arm, and you can see it's a ladybug. Exciting! <laughs> I sense a boss battle in the air. Why does that boss music? <laughs> Let me just adjust my microphone position. And then you hear a voice seem to speak out of nowhere. Ah, dear child of fate, this is disappointing. Oh my god. However, all is not lost yet. And then, seemingly from a split, it's it's almost like, I am, oh crap. I'm not sure if that's me or you, so we're just going to give it just a few minutes. It it was him. It was him? Okay. Ah, Okay. Cool. It seems to be fine. Turn off the porn in the other room. (laughs) We good now? (laughs) Yes, we're good. Okay, continue, because I really like this voice. Okay. This is based on my favorite JoJo's villain. Well, let's go. Uh, So then, not Dio, by the way. Uh, So then, from what seems to be a split in the air, no visual indications given. It's almost like you're looking right at the corner of a wall, but like you're looking at it such that like the whole length of the wall that's like uh, perpendicular to you is hidden because you're looking straight down it. Mm Mm-hmm. It seems like a hand reaches straight through thin air and steps out from around the corner ever so slightly. And you can see the silhouette of this kind of marble stone white humanoid in front of you. And its long slender arm reaches over towards the piece of wood in your mouth, touches it with his fingers and pulls it away from you. And it's, the shape is, it almost looks like his body is made out of, like, marble. But there's this one very distinct crack along his face, where an eye is peeking through, and this kind of crimson red color surrounds the edge of the crack. Now then, please, share with me what's inside your heart. I want Cress back. Ah, that is but a simple task, dear child. 
do you understand who you have audience with in this moment? She kind of glares at him. <laughs> she wants to say no and I don't care. But she's trying to get Cress back, so she just says, No. And he says, Ah, Canary, but you do care. I can see it, written out, right in front of you. I am the very incarnation of fate itself. The dearest creation of eternity's will. You might know me as the god of fate. And it is I who brought you all to this very moment. And now, I need you to fulfill your purpose. And I will grant you what your heart desires. What do I need to do? He lifts up his, like, arm up close to his face and, like, sticks one finger up. Like a counting. You're cutting it out again. No. We good? Now you are. <laughs> it's... Let's just... Let's, yeah, that's just how it be. That's the last thing you heard me say. Clearly. No, it was, um, I asked, what do you need me to do? And then ah, I started okay. cutting out. Awesome. Okay. She reaches up one slender finger in front of him and points it upwards in sort of this indication of counting. Mm -hmm. And then he bends his arm down and points at Corcus's neck nearby him and says, All I need is to ensure that this halfling does not encounter my physical body. This is written in the stars. He must not reach my finger. And he holds up the rest of his hand and you see that his pinky seems to be missing. Ew. I'm confused. <laughs> so you're asking me to kill him? Yes, Canary. I need you to ensure that he is dead and nothing will bring him back. Okay, I can do that. Good. Then when the opportunity arises, drink his blood and take his soul for your own. <laughs> You're giving me everything I ever wanted. Girl, Thank I you. pity your life if this is everything you ever wanted. Everything I ever wanted. I've been vying for this <laughs> for months. I pity you. <sighs> the man she meets, the man like. <laughs> What's up, Mars? A few days ago, and she immediately wants to kill him like and makes it her life's going to kill him. Literally. How old is Canary, by the way? Old. <laughs> Old, old, old. Like thousands numbers, we of have years. Numbers. Thousands. She doesn't count it. She's <laughs> thousands. Oh my god. Thousands. She's old as dirt, man. She's old, old. She's pre the, remember, she's pre the city being built old. Oh she's yeah. Dirt. <laughs> she's old as dirt. She hasn't cared about a human or anything in a very long time. I'm just going to so, go with she's Eric's age. She's old as dirt. Elric, yeah, she's probably. Old as dirt. She's ready for... <laughs> and so... Gorgeous is dead! <laughs> the god of fate <laughs> then speaks to you and says, But your emotions have clearly caused you trouble. 
as he points towards Mania, who has still got you in like a full Nelson. I need to grant you one more favor. And to do so will take quite a bit of my power in this state. Do not disappoint me, young vampire. And he reaches his hands out, kind of grabs it to like uh, your shirt and like pulls you forward. And it seems like you phase through Mania's grasp. And then you're teleported away to some room that you don't quite recognize. It looks kind of like you're in a bar. And he says, Now bide your time carefully. I will not accept failure. You will only have one opportunity. Intercept him when he reaches the top of this tower. Okay. Good. And you see him disappear back behind that edge of nothingness. And then time starts to flow again around you. And you see uh, people in this bar are kind of uh, like going about their business normally. And you've uh, appeared in kind of a secluded corner where people weren't looking. All right. Okay. Kill Corcus, the god of fate, is back. And Chris, Chris will come back. I can do this. <laughs> I can do this. And now, back to uh, the main group. Or at least the, the group with the most people in it. <laughs> So, as you're in the middle of grappling Canary, all of a sudden, in an instant, she goes from firmly in your grasp, Mania, to completely gone and disappears into thin air. What the fuck? Where'd she go? And Corcus goes, What the hell just happened? The lizard's dead. She wants you dead. And the bitch just disappeared. Fuck. <sighs> Oh boy, this is, uh, uh, I don't know what to call this. And Johnny Crazy? speaks up and goes, yeah, I know how you feel. It's, uh, yeah, what Barra said. Crazy. Yeah. Why does she uh, hate you so much? Did you kill her family? I don't know. Quite frankly, she was starting to remind me of Putin. Well, Oh, Honestly, fuck, not again. All you guys were, but right, uh, make sure re say re re say that. Yep. Can you repeat all of that? <laughs> Corpses lines. Yep. Yep. Okay. He goes. Oh, honestly, I don't know what's what's going. I, like she was trying to remind me of my old crew, and in fact, really all of you were, in a way. But. I don't know what's gotten under the skin so much. I think I, I know why. Really. At least with Wolverine. Did your old crew blow up in the Subaru too? No, I, I don't even know what a Subaru is. I, I, unless it was that thing, then I guess I do. Fuck that thing. We've got a fucking mission to do. Let's just... Fuck. You stay out of the fucking shadows. I know... She could do that kind of shit with that darkness. Stay out of the fucking shadows. You two, and she points at Bara and Johnny. You watch his back. You make sure she doesn't jump up on him from behind. Kaladin and I will take his front. What? Well, all right. And okay. she, she might just. You'll have to fight. need night and shining armors, but okay. I just and want I... him alive. Fair enough. Mm. Well, all right. Well then, if everybody's ready, uh, oh, what is that? And you see Johnny look up at the sky, and uh, like a shadow seems to pass by for a moment. And kind of a big one, like a large bird just passed by of you. And uh, you start to hear like a flapping noise. 
What the fuck? We should probably get walking. Yeah. I think I've had enough crazy for days. Well, if it's that fucking judgment goddess again, we'll just let her get the stupid bitch. Come on, let's go. Yep. And pretty quickly, you see a lot of the people at uh, the lifts. They, like, stop what they're doing. They, like, look up. And uh, the flapping gets, like, really close. Like, approaches you very fast. And, I uh... I swear to God, it's a damn bird. You turn around... And you see a damn bird. Oh my god! That's it's really the, big. Fuck, it's the fucking Kara! <laughs> what the fuck? And, uh, you kind of like, you see this massive wingspan bird, like, uh, flutter and, like, flap its wings really hard, and it kicks up a lot of, like, dust and wind at all of you. And, but it kind of, like, settles down for a moment as it starts to land, and on top of it, you uh, see what looks to be a changeling sitting on top of it, almost like it was riding it. Oh joy, a fucking changeling. Lovely. Okay. And uh, Loon, what do you do as you uh, arrive on the scene? Stop Fox. Suck fox? Is she telling me to suck a cock? Come again? What is up, fox? Say what's up, fox? Oh, what's oh, okay. up, fox? Okay. <laughs> Money just kind of like looks at her, tilts her head, and just goes, Have we met before? This is not Kara. <laughs> I assume you have all of the pieces but the finger. The fuck? Oh, uh, let me guess. You're in some kind of cahoots with someone who knows what we're doing? I mean, take them quickly. What? Technically, you I them? met the man, but I already knew what you're doing beforehand. Are you some kind of god because I, I need haven't to met yet? Release my sister. What else? Sister. Fucking Christ! Are you related to this thing? And she just gestures at Khaled. <laughs> By the soul, yes. By the soul? What the fuck does that mean? You see the big How bird the behind her? Fucking shit. <laughs> the big bird behind Loon starts to very quickly change shape into... as it compacts down into the shape of a humanoid. And very swiftly you see it turn into Elric. Oh, and he speaks fuck. up and goes, uh, No, she actually said, uh, that's soul. As in, that's her actual name. Also, hey guys, you missed me. Fuck you. You would not believe hell. the time I've had. Oh, I know, I missed you too, too. Uh, what? but the way probably should let okay. you know, Elric, out of just letting you know that the vampire is pissed off and is trying to kill the halfling even more, and Crest is dead. Damn. Yep. I'm Did I say what that going to die yep. anyways. What? Wait, what? What do you mean? Not if my axe has anything it's to do with it. It's all of our fates to die. We all face death. Do you want to elaborate? Technically not. What? Well, I guess that's a good point. I mean, I'm still alive. Yeah, didn't You're you fucking kill fuck a god? Gods can die, alright? It's everyone's fate to die. We all either die or pay taxes for the rest of our life. <laughs> Except for me, but, you know. Well, can be killed and can die are two different things. What? How the fuck are they two different things? You're well, talking to a person with fucking killed. little intelligence here, buddy. But unless somebody kills me, I'm not going to die. Uh, same for Loon here. 
And probably Kayla too. Or Soul, my bad. Okay, this is getting fucky and I'm not here for it. I'm going inside. You two keep the halfling protected from the back. Khaled and I will keep the halfling protected from the front. Do not let him fucking die. Understood? Yes. Uh, gotcha. Now so much info. Well, he's going to die by the end of this. I already don't like you. And she points at Loon. You see Elric just chuckle. And you what can you fucking about? bite me. I get that a lot. You didn't uh, answer the question. Why the like fuck are you laughing? What's going to What'd she say? What'd you, come again, what'd you say, Morris? Some people just don't like facing their fate. There's too much fucking talk of fate. And what? Purple? Uh, I was gonna say, uh, you didn't answer my question, Elric. Why the fuck you laughing, sir? Oh, I was laughing because of how well they're getting along. I swear to God, I will remove your manhood using Bloodborne. Do not fucking test me. Like to see it, man, as I can actually. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can regenerate his dick. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Not an image I needed to fucking see in my brain. Thank you. Can we get going? Ah, but Bar, I've done it before. I gotta show you how to do that, Johnny. Very Ooh, useful. For the that? love of God, keep all cocks inside your pants. We're going in the fucking city. All right, fine. Let's go. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Who said everyone. you're fucking going? What? What do you mean? Who said you're going? I don't trust you. I don't want you on this fucking mission. Why don't you trust me? She kind of just, like, tilts her head at him and just gives him, like, a wide-eyed look, like... Huh? Alright, fine. Fine, you know what? You know what? I'm a, I'm a good leader, right? I'm a fucking general. We'll make this fucking democratic. You two! Come here! And she gestures at Farah and Johnny. Oh, uh, yes? Oh, and okay. you, you two small... Fucking halfling, come here. I still don't know your name. Come here. Uh, it's Corcus. Sure, okay. that, whatever. Steve, come on, just... All right, everybody who wants this, and she gestures at Elric, on the mission, raise your fucking hand. Johnny and Corcus do not raise their hand. <laughs> <laughs> Vara definitely does not raise her hand. Well, democracy stands. Let's go. And Mania just starts walking. All right, kind of hurt my feelings. All right, have a good mission, everybody. I'll be here. We hurt your feelings, <laughs> fucker. <laughs> kind of hurt my feelings, but we okay. hurt yours. Laura Kelly is just staring at Loon. Khaled, let's go. Yeah, she goes. Nice. Word. I'm still and Kaylee follows along with you. Cool. Uh, where the fuck are we headed? Uh, just towards. I'll say like there's a main staircase to the base of the tower. Cool. That, We're going uh, up that. Goes up into it. You do that. As you enter into the base of the tower, you see that. Uh, the interior seems to be somewhat hollowed out. It's a pretty busy walkway of like a lot of people who are uh, just carrying personal items or themselves just uh, making their way up the stairs or down the stairs or across the stairs through various openings and windows that you can see. And it seems like all of the cargo movement was taking place outside of the lifts. Whereas in here, it's this sort of stone maze of uh, stairs that go this way and that. But there is a very clear main staircase that spirals up quite high. As long as you walk in like single file lines, you're able to make it up pretty high, pretty quickly. Great, I'm going that way. 
Yay. I mean, we've been on a boat for weeks. It's good to get some exercise. <laughs> if you Weird. ran around the dock like I told you to, you'd be fine. I would, but somebody was trying to do something else. <laughs> Fair point. And as you continue to walk, you get to a chunk where it seems like the stairs uh, give way to kind of like a platform area. Uh, it seems like the tower might be segmented somewhat. Uh, but this kind of like opens up a surprising amount into this kind of like plaza. Where there's a few very compact looking shops that seem to all be fighting over visual real estate to get uh, customers' attention. Uh, and it's this surprisingly nice little area. Where it looks like there's a lot of people just hanging on the streets, talking, and the the shops around seem quite busy. There seems to be maybe a bar that's like kind of larger. We are not stopping for a fucking drink. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, that's actually probably a good idea. Yeah. Since, I mean, we just have to make it to the top of this tower. And we need to keep you from being seen. Uh, Bara, do you still have your cloak on? Like, on your back? Yes. Cool. Uh, Mania's going to reach forward, or actually, she's gonna turn around, reach over your shoulder, grab your cloak, pull it off of you. I hit my microphone, I'm so sorry, chat. <laughs> pull it off of you and drop it on, uh, Corcus's head to keep him from being recognized. I don't know what you did. I don't want to know what you did. But for some reason, somebody wants you dead. That's not the fucking vampire. So we're going to keep that face hidden. Yeah, that's uh, probably a good idea. Being in this place, knowing that he's somewhere in here is uh, a little bit worrying. Whatever you do, don't you dare get any fucking stains on it. I will be the one to kill you then. Don't, don't do what? Sorry, I was a little bit distracted. Don't get any stains on it. Oh, oh, oh the cloak. Uh, sure. I'll make sure not to do that. You know, you could just use magic to get this stain. You know what? Never mind. Let's just go. Do I look like a witch or wizard? You look like a fucking ranger. Don't you bitches have, like, really weird nature magic or some shit? Johnny leans in and he like whispers to you. And he goes, "Ah, uh, Bara, it's it's a spell called Prestidigitation. Uh, Eldrick was telling me about it a little while ago, a few weeks back, I think." Okay. Although I would, I use Druidcraft. It's a little different. Obviously. Just, just thought you should know. All right, chop, chop, lovebirds, let's go. Where are we going? Yeah, where are we going? <laughs> like, how, how the fuck do we get to the top of this tower? Uh, you can see there does seem to be a continuation uh, of the stairs, uh, and it seems like it's oh, another kind no. of uh, side pathway. There's going to be a whole lot of stairs. But uh, oh, man. you do notice that there also seems to be some lifts here and there. If you want to try taking those, I'm gonna I'm gonna approach this the lifts and I'm going to see uh, what people are how people are getting on these lifts. I just want to see if, if they gotta present some sort of ID or some shit. Uh, it seems like there's a few different systems in place. You see that there seems to be one where people are just kind of like grabbing onto what looks to be like a bar. And they just kind of hold on to it with their hand and their foot, and it like lifts them up to probably the next level. It looks like there's a wheel at the base of it that's like turning it. Lever just coming from somewhere. Uh, aside from that, there also seems to be like larger mechanical lifts that are like lifting larger objects or like groups of people at the same time. I want to approach one of the one with the groups. You do that, and uh, you see a halfling chilling out at the base of it. Uh, holding the clipboard. Oi. He just goes, Oh, hey there, I can help you. I don't get to the top. Uh, you wait for the lift to come back, and I'll send you up. Wonderful. Great. And she waves everybody over. 
walk over to her back. Uh, <laughs> I'm not taking the fucking stairs. Do I look stupid? Yeah, you see the halfling is just kind of like cleaning out his fingernails or something. He's just he's just vibing. He does just not chilling. give a fuck. Hey, and how then, many floors are there? Uh, seeing how this entire city is one tower, I'm gonna say like, uh, how tall is the Empire State Building? Oof. That height. Oof. <laughs> There's a lot of floors. That's a fuck ton of floors, my guy. Damn. Oh yeah. Damn, it's even bigger than the Bass Pro Shops Pyramid. Jesus Christ. The Bass Pro Shops Pyramid? Do you the not know what? what that is? Is it the pyramid in Las Vegas? It's in Memphis. Oh. I'll, I have we'll talk about that later. I'll show it to you. It's it's a fucking mess, man. <laughs> the Word. dragon is comprehending life. Many is just guys wait. pats the dragon on the back. You guys wait around for a bit, and you get to, you know, the cork, like, the cork is, the halfling is just kind of, like, chilling, the cork. waiting around. You see him, like, lift up his, his gaze a bit, and he kind of, like, glances around at the crew, looking at Corcus first, since he's another halfling. And Corcus kind of, like, looks away from him. Looks over at Johnny, Johnny kind of looks away from him. He scratches his neck a little bit. He looks over at Mania. She looks directly at him. He looks over at Bara. <laughs> she stares him down. He looks over at Caleb. <laughs> Caleb's got the DuckTales theme song in her head. Then he walk away. Celeste. Celeste. What? Mania kind of leans over and just goes, what? That's my name. Celeste, huh? Well, at least you're finally getting something back. That's a nice name. You see the halfling still kind of picking at his fingernails. Eventually, he kind of like reaches into a pocket and pulls out a book. Like, flips through it a little bit. It looks like he's reading. Mania looks uh, at Johnny and Corcus and just goes, Jesus Christ, you two couldn't be more obvious if you tried. Johnny goes, what, what does obvious mean? I don't understand. You don't know what fucking obvious means. Uh, Johnny, it, it means you're sticking like a, sore, out, like a sore thumb. Johnny looks over his shoulder and around at like the crowd. He's like, I, I, I don't... What do you mean? Oh, Jesus Christ. Please, somebody give that child a fucking dictionary. I'll be taking him to a library after this anyways, at some point. Good. Just don't the, fuck uh... in the library. I'm pretty sure the library would kill me. Eh, you don't know. Some of them might be into it. Uh, no, I know this librarian. <laughs> Oof. Oh, wait, is that the librarian from the town over? The Fool's Hope? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, he's still alive? <laughs> he is <laughs> an elf. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, probably still alive. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure he'll be surprised to see you after, you know, deal with my trauma ass. Yeah, uh, yeah. Jesus Christ. And you see the, the halfling who's uh, reading his book go, oh, yeah. And yeah, uh, Puppy Dog is the year of one of the books after a second. And he, oh. like, uh, yanks on a little rope. Uh, and you hear, like, a bell ring high up above you, like, faintly. And then the, the ropes start turning again. It seems like they're reversing direction. How much you make for this job? Book. He goes, uh, what? How much uh, you make for this job? Oh, no. Uh, however much people use the lift, it's, it's honest work. You know, plenty of time to read. And you it's probably don't your page. Hey, do I look like I carry a bookmark? 
what is is dog earring not a thing? Does do people not like that? People don't like it. Librarians want to take people's hands off for it. Oh, yeah. sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, didn't didn't see your library with you. Oh, I, ignore her. All right. Just go back to your book. Oh, okay. And he looks back at his book. Gunia turns to Bara and just goes, "My brother in Christ, shut up! Don't piss anybody off here." And then after a little bit longer of the turning, you finally see the platform, like, reappear. <laughs> and then... Fucking finally. There's a there's a very elderly couple stepping off of it very slowly as one of them, like, inches forward on his, like, his, his, his cane. <laughs> and the other one has, like, a hand on their back, so like, oh, come on. He easy does it. Damn it, I really want to throw him, but that's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> but he just stands there tapping her foot and staring at the couple like if you do not move in the next two seconds I swear to god I will toss you off the window he uh keeps inching forward he gets his gets his cane off the, the lift and onto the, the more firm stone tower and he steps off of it still inching forward <laughs> inching forward more inching forward more you sure you just want to take the more. stairs Inching forward a little bit more. Farah, I swear to god, if you talk to me one more time before these fuckers are off of the lift, I will remove your boobs. He turns to Kara and goes, Oh no, the stairs are too tiring. The uh, lift is what you want. And he turns back and keeps inching forward a little bit. I'm going inching to kill myself. Bit. Inching forward a little bit. Is there enough room where we can walk around? Yeah, there's enough room now. Okay, cool, we move around. <laughs> Oh my god, I was about to be like, make shit, I'm coming to remove your man titties. <laughs> <laughs> Did you all step onto the platform? Yes. Word. Yes. Uh, switching back to Lovesick's perspective now. Uh, Lovesick, you're in the bar. You know, what's, your, what's your plan of action here to get to the top of this tower? Uh, so... Um... The sun is out, right? <clears throat> yeah. And is it is it hitting the tower? Uh, sunlight is getting into the tower through some windows. Yeah. I'm more thinking it. There's a side of the tower if the sun's on it, or not directly above it. There's a side where it's light and it's dark, right? Oh yeah, it's like. It's not noon right now, it's like, uh, I think it would be early in the day right now, actually. Okay, so theoretically, since there's, you know, shadows on one side of the tower, theoretically I would just be able to walk up it, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, because you can fly <laughs> in darkness, you could just walk straight up that thing. Alright, <laughs> so I'm gonna walk up the side of the tower. I leave the bar and I look at the tower and I see there's a light side and a dark side. Mm -hmm. And there are windows, right? Yeah. Also, as you leave the bar, you kind of open up into this like plaza looking area. And uh, you do catch a glimpse as you're at the doorway that uh, looks like Caleb standing head and shoulders above the rest of everybody is on a lift as they're going up the tower. You get a glimpse of them as they start to disappear, but it's pretty recognizable. All right. I... <laughs> I can't... No, that would be good. All right. Okay. I make my way towards the tower to the side that is shadowy. You do and that. I walk up it. <laughs> I want to walk up it. <laughs> you walk over to the side of the tower, which is shadowy. You activate your ability to fly as a Twilight Cleric. Mm -hmm. And you just start walking just directly up a vertical wall. Yep. Even though you could just, like, Minecraft creative mode, like, fly up, like, directly alongside it. Oh, yeah. At, like, a walking <laughs> speed. But if you want to walk up the side, sure, let's... Oh, walk up the side. 
otherwise, how are they going to hear the boss music? Come on. <laughs> True. Okay, I'm already hearing the boss music beside me. <laughs> and so you start to strut your way up the side of the tower, occasionally encountering, like, staircases where, like, people are walking at a perpendicular direction, and they notice you, you know, walking along the side of a tower, but they don't really pay you too much mind, because it's not active. Like, they they see you, and they're just like, oh, well, cool. And they, like, keep walking, like, ignoring you. And you see a few people who are, like, cleaning the sides, like, of uh, what seems to be small buildings jutting out from the tower. They're, like, scrubbing it. And they're on like harnesses and ropes. They also kind of just ignore you and they're like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> oh, according to plan. <laughs> Stealth. Do well, I. Am I going to reach the top before them in the lift or. Oh yeah, a walking speed is a directly vertical walking speed is definitely going to be faster than a lift. So, I assume you just walk up to like what looks to be the top of this thing. Mm -hmm. As you're walking along the side of this tower, you notice that like there's a lot of. Uh, it seems like there's some ladybugs that are landing in like a pathway for you. And as you're getting closer to the top, it seems like there's these oddly designed uh, sort of openings at the base of some structure at the top of the tower. And they look like slit holes, kind of like a parpet. And the ladybugs seem to be guiding you. you know, like, they form this kind of a zigzag pattern. Mm. I follow uh, the ladybugs. <laughs> You do that. Give me a stealth check with advantage. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. All right. Nice. 17 plus 1. Again, 18. You manage to... So as you're walking along this path of these ladybugs, nothing really seems to happen. Like... Things seem pretty calm. So far. Um... Let me just quickly... Roll for something. Uh, give me another stealth check. This time, just a regular one. Read D and D's party's worst nightmare. DM goes, I'm just gonna roll for something. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta roll a few dice just to scare oh. people. <laughs> Seventeen. Uh Loon, can you give me a perception check? That's that's a bigger number. That's a twenty-one. Oh dear. And so, as you're uh, as you're walking along the side of this building, uh, give me give me a perception check really quickly, Musik, because I need to know if you like notice what's going on. Perception check. Perceptions plus one. Dirty hmm. twenty. So as you're walking up the face of uh, this tower, you notice that there seems to be a, a rather oddly loud, like flapping noise, almost like a bird's kind of close by. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Okay. Do you do you look around? 
I would like to, yeah. If it, it is it does it sound like an abnormally large bird or just a regular bird? I mean, this whole time you've been walking up this cliff and you could see like some birds around, but like you hadn't heard any like loud flapping. It just sounded like little birds. This is like a this is a worryingly loud like wing noise. Then I'll look around. You do that and you notice that there seems to be a particularly large eagle, like a gigantic one at a distance, that's uh, circling the tower. And it looks like there's something sitting on top of it riding it. Hmm. Yeah, I... <laughs> what floor am I at when I see this? Uh, you're like... I'll say you're like a hundred feet away from the top. All right. Uh, are there any windows nearby? Um... Yeah, there's, like, uh, 50 feet ahead of you, there's, like, an opening into a building. All right. I'm going to go up the 50 feet and go through the opening. And when I do that, I would like to cast... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, 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 hold on. Uh... I'd like to disguise myself. Word. So you disguise self? Yeah. Uh, so, as you're, as you're walking, the ladybugs kind of form a different path this time, and it's going towards that window. And then, as you're walking, it seems like, in like a chunk of them along the line, when you're like about 20 feet away, some of the ladybugs get a little sporadic and they break the line and kind of like scatter from a point that seems to be like a, a five foot space. And the other ladybugs don't seem bothered, but the ones in that five foot space seem to have been like some completely like made them scatter. Like very suddenly. Oh dear. Um, can I cast... Ooh. Would take up a slot though. Ah, oh, fuck it. Uh, I'm gonna cast find traps for that five foot space to see what's up. You cast that. Uh, let me see. You sense the presence of a trap within range that is within the line of sight. A trap that is purpose of the spell includes anything that will impact. Anything that would inflict a sudden or unaffected, unexpected effect you consider harmful or undesirable, which was specifically intended as such by its creator. Ah, uh, this spell does not detect anything. Hmm. She like looks at the ladybugs. Is it's on the floor the five foot patch that where the ladybugs are all messed up? Yeah, like there's a there's a line of ladybugs crossing like the twenty feet left right now, and about five feet from the window, a five foot patch of them just kind of like scatter and dissipate. Can I look at the ground to see if there's like a like line or a hatch or to see if like a stone has been moved to see if someone tried to like hide something there. Uh nothing seems to be occurring there. Like the fine trap spell didn't seem to do anything. But now, as you pause for a moment, the ladybugs on the far side of that scattering seem to start reappearing in line, like they land in the purposeful spot. But the ones a bit closer to you are starting to scatter. It's almost like the patch that uh, they're avoiding is now starting to get a bit, bit closer to you. And I'm inside? <laughs> no, you're still 20 feet away from that window. Oh, dear. Um, you're well, still, like, I'm, outside on a wall. I'm gonna... I'm just... I'm gonna, like, not walk anymore and just float past that thing. I don't want to put my feet there. You're gonna float? I don't want to put their feetsies. I don't want to put my footsies. <laughs> no. 
You're gonna float past that. I'm gonna float past it, like a little float. Do you still go in a straight line towards the window? Yeah, they want in. Okay, uh, Loon, give me an attack roll. A ranged attack roll. Fucking nice. As the uh, the ladybugs that are scattering reach your position, suddenly... <laughs> well, that's definitely it. <laughs> Does, uh, what's your armor class? Lovesick? Mine is, is like slow 11. as shit. <laughs> yeah, there's okay. no way that doesn't hit. That's a 34. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Jesus Christ, what? <laughs> that was like a lot Bye, of extra love sick. Jesus. <laughs> Uh, Lovesick, what's your, what's your maximum HP? Uh. <laughs> she, no, she's killed her. High. Not very high at all. What is it? Uh, hold on, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I'm, I'm pretty sure. 33. Your max, max is. 33 and my armor class is 11. She's dead. Oh, oh no. no. Yeah, oh my. you killed me. <laughs> so, uh. I get to be with so, Chris. As you're, as you're starting to float a little bit more, uh, kind of faster towards the window, uh, an arrow quickly pierces through your arm. Uh, I'm gonna say... Let me, let me quickly roll. Uh, one, D, two. Uh, one is your left arm, two is your right arm. I'm a clown. Exciting. One, your left arm. Uh, it pierces right through your left arm and immediately severs it off with the uh, the force of God. And a lightning bolt immediately strikes down on the position that it hit. Uh, you take... Uh, what's the initial damage? 17 plus 8 damage from the arrow. But 25. You, you managed to avoid the explosion of lightning that then lands on that arrow. Alright. She looks around to see where the person is who cast the arrow. Uh, it came from that, uh, that, uh, the eagle. <laughs> the big bird. Well, big bird. Um. <laughs> <clears throat> I, um... Basically had that trajectory. Hold on, let me double check. You're gonna have to... Ooh, cast at what level? What level do I want to cast? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Cancel. Um... I'll go at level four. Banishment, get out of here. Let me in the building. Awarded. Banishment, one action, 60 feet. One creature that you can see within range. Is she within range? Components, the material is an item distasteful to the target. Interesting component. Concentration up to one minute. You attempt to send one creature you can see within range to another plane of existence. Uh, the range being 60 feet, which is immensely outside the range that you just got attacked from. So no need to waste the spell slot. Damn, okay. Um, how close am I to the window? Can I just jump in? Or... You could definitely jump in at this point. I'm just jumping in and disguising myself as someone who doesn't look like me, who has an arm. You should probably also heal yourself, <laughs> just saying. Yeah, you're also fairly injured from the missing limb now. I mean, if the lightning had hit me, it would have cauterized it. <laughs> so no. Kind of unlucky no, it wouldn't. It, it would have killed you. The, but I also the arrow. Cauterized it. No, it wouldn't. The, lightning doesn't. The arrow, <laughs> the arrow has a radiant damage on it, so technically that does it. Also, you're a vampire, so you wouldn't really have to worry too much about bleeding out. Yeah. Uh. So I'm you not uh really interested in mending myself. I'm just gonna You hop in through the window and cast disguise self. What do you disguise yourself as? A fat old man. <laughs> Funny enough. With two arms. <laughs> I was just about to have a 
because the the place you jumped into, I was gonna just say, is like some kitchen, and as a uh, you tumble into the window, uh, you see this kind of older looking guy who seems to be some kind of butcher since he's got like a, an apron on. It's a pretty big dude, heavy set. And he turns and goes, "What in heavens? What are you climbing out there?" And my goodness, well, if you speak like that, you somehow managed to... He, like, rushes past you and pushes you aside and looks out the window. What was that noise? Uh, Sir, are you all right? Yes. A bird hit the wall. Bye! (laughs) A a bird? That must have been the biggest fucking bird of... (laughs) Big bird. Are you sure you're all right? She looks at him <laughs> and thinks about killing him for a minute. <laughs> and then she's just like, big, big bird. Big bird. Bye now. <laughs> no answer to his question. <clears throat> she's on a warpath. All right. Or exit the kitchen. You just a, <coughs> oh, I had to cough. One second. <coughs> what is going on? Double Stop dying. Throat's itchy. <coughs> oh. Just had to check on something real quick. <coughs> uh, which is my ability to breathe, apparently. Holy crap. <coughs> Triple bless you. Please stop dying. I would appreciate that. Thank you. Do I need to get you a new pair of lungs? Thank you, Alex. A square man can't die. <laughs> uh, just checking in on if there is an event that's about to occur based on what just happened. Uh, yeah, that would make sense. So, as you uh, walk your way through that, uh, like, towards the exit of this, like, little restaurant that uh, you just walked out of the kitchen of, mm-hmm. you hear like a pretty, another pretty loud thump from the direction that you came from. And uh, you hear that guy's voice again, going like, Oof. why is there people climbing through my window? What is going on outside? I start to run. You start to <laughs> run. Good way in, to give yourself away. In a disguise, you start, start to run. To run. <laughs> Jesus I don't know Christ. if they can just stutter in disguise. I start to run. <laughs> I don't know. Last the goddess of judgment, she'd be able to tell me or see through any disguise. This is so not the goddess run. of judgment. I don't care. They hit me with a freaking arrow okay, lightning bolt. I'm pretty sure it's some sort of goddess. Know, okay. I start to run. Ain't no uh, way. Ain't no Loon, way. Give me a perception check once you. You exit the the restaurant and look around. Seventeen. You look around, and it seems to be a mildly busy like area. It seems like there's a like you're pretty close to the top of the tower at this point. Uh, you're at like what seems to be the last layer. Things are or things are a lot sparser up here. Seems like things aren't as busy, but there's still plenty of people, like, wandering around doing business at this level. But it seems like there's now a few more guards. Like, people who work for something akin to a militia here. Lovesick, did you actually start running? Yes, I start to run. You did <laughs> start- You hear me second-guessing myself. I start to run. I run. I run, I run, I run. I run, I run, I run, I run. So- I'm gone. As... I'm zooming. I am zooming on the speed. As you are- <laughs> A young girl. <laughs> Put it as in you... a man's body. As you do that, uh, boom. You exit through the entrance of that, uh- that kitchen and as you see people just kind of like going about their days you see one heavy set man running in 
uh, away from this from this establishment. I run, I run. I'm zooming. <laughs> Where are you running to? Away. <laughs> <laughs> Out. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Big bird, bye! Out of the kitchen. I'm trying to find the stairwell to finish going up the tower. And so you're heading towards the staircase to get to the top right now? Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, you're heading towards that. And... Mars, what do you do <laughs> as you see them gunning it for the staircase a good ways ahead of you? You gonna do this thing you message me? Okay, word. Uh, as you're as you're trying to run towards the stairs, you realize they you don't seem you, you don't seem to be getting faster. You're kind of like slowing down, and you feel kind of like this force around you that's almost gripping you and keeping you in place. And you're like running in place almost, and you start to slide backwards towards a. Uh, this one tiefling with a bow and arrow who seems to be doing the Darth Vader grip towards you. Did I say tiefling? Oh, changeling. Mm -hmm. What's her other hand on? Uh, a bow and arrow. She's holding a bow. She's holding a bow with one hand and the other hand is Darth Vader in grip trying to pull me away. So theoretically, if I were to <laughs> turn on a dime and sprint towards her, she would actually, by pulling me, make me faster running towards her, right? Yes. As physics. Okay. I do that. <laughs> you turn... And you start running towards the changeling who is uh, pulling you in with like a... It's basically like the Accio spell from Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. Which, side note folks, I don't like Harry Potter because of the magic system. All right, all right, all right, Move all on. right. We don't want to bring that conversation in here. <laughs> Move don't on. worry. I'll save that for us. Let's a talk about that. No, independent we will video. not. Because I will go on way too long about that. My brothers and in Christ the just piece. fucking kill each other. So or don't you're getting you're getting pulled towards them and you run towards them to increase your speed. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you do that, what is uh what is your next move? I believe if I'm correct. I have a dagger. I yes. am going to wait until the last second grab my dagger and I'm going to attempt to stick it in their eye. Little shish kebab action. In the one eye that works, goddamn. Shish kebab. Meow. Word. I have to uh, do this with my right hand. Which eye? Because <laughs> reaching across for a, that, if, if it's their, what is it? Is your right, and then if it's their right. If it's their right eye that they still have, it's going to be awkward for me to stab it. Just want to point that out. I think Loon still has both their eyes. Right, oh, she I'm just go... she just has the mark over one, right? Yeah, she she has like a scar on her face, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I'm going for a left eye. Mubby. All right, as you're. Lunging towards them, give me give me an attack roll. Alrighty. And Moon, what is your uh, what is your armor class? All right, I'm it's, it's ninety nine point nine percent certain that did not hit. It's so six. As you uh, run towards them and lunge your knife at them, uh. 
with the kind of like tip of their bow, they, they just kind of like calmly bring it up with their wrist and flick away the like they deflect the trajectory of the knife and it does not stab them in the eye. I do not stop. I don't I don't release my acceleration when I'm going to do this because my backup plan is to push her out the window. She's with enough standing body. in front of they're oh, not at a window. Just, no, didn't she just come through the same place I did? You're Wasn't not in the window? kitchen. She dove through the window, exited the kitchen, and I'm she's now to follow you. Her. Yeah, I'm gonna quarterback. It's a straight shot, isn't it? To the thing. So theoretically, if I were what? to quarterback her, <laughs> yeah. right to the window, that's what I'm if, gonna try. No, you if you get, fight, you're not the window. if you get a twenty on your strength check, actually no. If you beat their strength check, then I'll say you pick them up. Going out the window, honey. Yeah, got a fourteen. Got a fourteen. This is gonna be interesting. Yeah. Fourteen. Uh, Loon, can you give me a strength check? I I, I hate this. This this is so confusing. They're not by a window. You're not by a. Hmm. Yeah, it's gonna be a long run with them. Incredibly, as you. <laughs> Oh my god! Incredible. As you manage to hit them, you do actually manage to, like, pick them up, even though you're but a small individual. With one arm. Yes. Actually, wait, since you have one arm, give me disadvantage on your on your strength. <laughs> of course. Now that you've uh, reminded me of the fact that you have a... Uh, had one of your arms impaled off of you? Yes, I only- I'm working with one arm. <laughs> so. So a 12. Huh. Still beats her! Wow. What with the one fuck arm. is happening? Rage. <laughs> you managed to- I was gonna go with stupidity, but sure. Rage. You managed to pick her up. Yeah. Wow. All right. Throwing you out the window. <laughs> there is no window. <laughs> you I'm need to you to the window that we just came out of to you throw know, you. No, you guys in. have already left the kitchen. You're away. Guys, I, I know where the positioning is. Don't worry. You now need Straight to move uh, about forty feet forward to get to the window. That. Well, let's go. <laughs> American football. Hey. And you are currently out of movement since you just ran that a whole distance and made an attack. Ran the whole distance. And it is now Loon's turn. Uh, Loon, you've uh, been picked up. Uh, what do you do? I have the sneaking suspicion it's something akin to a smite. Uh... Ah, so you're gonna go for an attack like that. That would be a... I'm going to flavor that as using a spell slot with sleep, because it kind of has to be that. So give me a... Give me a expenditure of a sleep spell, because that's... They told me they're gonna do a thing with... Uh like, melee to incapacitate you, and I'm like... Mm, that only works in movies. So, uh, that's the sleep spell. Boing. Which I, I'm pretty sure they have prepared, so... Because it's a, a goaded spell. I mean, I can look. Boop. 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 Mars, fill out your character sheet! If not, give me a strength check at disadvantage to see if you kind of accomplish that. It only works in the D&D movie. I haven't seen it yet, Alex, even though I, I probably should have gone to see it today, but whatever, I still need to watch it. It's it's pretty goaded, maybe it's I know that good as fuck. I, I know there's a chunky dragon. That's it's a very I'm chunky in. dragon. Hey, y'all were... Yeah, I'm gonna say you—you you probably have it prepared, Mars. I—I'm 
99.9% certain that you had this spell prepared in this character. Uh, I just need to remember what the metrics for it are. I have, uh, I have sleep. Here, I, on... can, I can show you it. Oh, okay, she can show you. What level do you want to cast it with? Not one you have, probably. Yeah, they're probably going to do some really high level spell and put like people around them to I sleep. I can show you what level 9 looks like. Or whatever. 22 hit points worth of sleep. Then uh, she's is dead. Is that the level you cast it at? No, sleep doesn't kill you. But they are very asleep right now. So if you do cast that, then yeah. Mars, you there? Oh, they're typing. There it is. Uh, creatures within 20 feet of a point you choose within range or sending order. The current hit points. You know, conscious creatures. Uh, roll 5d8. That is the value. So I'll just roll that. Nice. 25. Uh, what is your current uh, health pool at right now? Well, how much did it cost when you took my arm again? Good question. I think it was 17 plus 8, so uh, mathematics is difficult. 25 damage? 25 damage... Does my armor subtract anything from that, or...? Oh no, that, that hit, because it beat your armor class. Alright, so... 25, so 8. <laughs> I have 8 HP. Yeah, you you definitely got put to sleep by the, the sleep spell. I'm honk shooing, buddy. What? I don't know what honk shooing is. Honk, it, it's <laughs> it sounds. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Making Z's. And so you are now very much asleep. All right. Meanwhile, uh, unless uh, Loon, do you do anything right after that? You now uh, thoroughly put them to sleep. She just creates a bunch of chains around her. You chain up the small vampire lady. I make a joke at that, but no. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Group A, uh, you're on the lift. You're vibing. You're going up the lift, slowly. Uh, and then uh, Johnny says to... Uh, uh, Mania, he goes, uh, so, uh, looks like, uh, the journey's coming to an end soon. Uh, Whippy. What, uh, do you think you'll do with your wish? I know exactly what I'm doing with my wish. I'm becoming a fucking god. Ah. Uh, well, if Elric's anything to go off of, it might not be the best idea. And why is that? Well, I mean... How many times have you tried to kill him at this point? I try to kill a lot of people, don't take it personally. But how many times have you tried to kill him? Directly or indirectly? Because one is three, the other is two. Still. And he still seems at least somewhat happy to see us. I still haven't really forgiven him for what happened, but something seems odd about him. What, the fact that he can turn into a ten-foot-tall fucking weird-ass monster? I think it was fifteen when he said it, but I don't know, oh. maybe he's exaggerating. Fifteen. I, I don't know, I've never seen it. I've only seen Old King's fucking notes, so I wouldn't know, but... uh. I don't know, man. Oh, come to think of it, I haven't actually thought too much about what I'd wish for. Uh, Mara, what, uh, what will you wish for? 
Don't tell me Discord cut out the wrong time. I, I can still hear you. Oh. Discord cut you off for me. Oh, okay. Can you say that again? Uh, Johnny turns to you and goes, Bara, what, uh, what have you thought about wishing for? That's a question I haven't thought since you got back. <laughs> Many is watching them with, like, narrowed eyes. Something you want to say, Mania? There are many things I'd like to say, kid. You don't probably want to hear any of them. You are aware I'm about 200 years old, right? You are aware that I don't give a fuck, right? Fair enough. There you go. So, anyway, uh, Corcus. What uh, are you going to wish for? And Corcus just seems to be like, like biting his nails right now, and going, uh, uh, "What? What's? What's up, kid? What are you going to wish for?" Uh, I, I, I'm not sure. I guess I don't know. Just for things to be the way they used to be. I can get my old crew back. Maybe. Maybe Warren. Am I getting his name right? Whoopsie. Willerin. Whoopsie. Maybe Willerin will, uh. Maybe he'll stop hating me. You know. Go back to the way things used to be. Trust me, things don't ever go fully back the way they once were. Say that one more time directly into your mic. <laughs> Trust me, things don't always go back the way they once were. There you go. <sighs> well, regardless, uh, I'm looking forward to just returning to Silenoris. Maybe rebuilding the old town. <sighs> Fucking cool, so you'll go back to those cities. Um, what was what was that, Mania? I said, "Of fucking course, you'll go back to those cities." Oh no, not not the city. Uh, back where I used to live in country, kingdom, whatever they're called. The bitches inside the walls. Mm. No, you're you're welcome to visit. <laughs> yeah, the Queen of Voiran is welcome to visit. Fucking <laughs> sure. Yeah, that won't get me fucking killed. What do you mean? She kind of, like, debates whether or not to tell him. And it's just like, fuck it, I'm never gonna see this kid again. You do know. We're the ones who've been fighting with Silenoris. For years. That is British. We're the ones who've been fighting for Silenoris. For, like, years. Centuries, even. Well, yeah, but the curse has been listed, lifted on the forest, and it seems like Elric wants to at least try and repair relationships. The opinion of be... one person means jack shit to the opinion of many. Even if, by some fucking miracle, all of Silenoris decides that they actually care about the people outside of the fucking walls, Voiron doesn't like you. General, you, not you, you. Well, I never said that Voyron had to visit, just I'd be fine with you visiting. Jesus fucking Christ, you were such a child. You, you do know that I'm well over a hundred years old, right? And you do know that I'm both taller than you and I could probably take your arm off. Well, I, I don't see what that has to do with it. Mania turns and looks at Bar and just goes, Seriously, this guy. What? I don't get it. Am I missing something, Bar? You don't know enough about the you world, are... kid. Johnny, 
you are aware you remember that night, right? You know, got shot. Come again? <laughs> you remember that night when you got shot, right? Well, yes, unfortunately. You are aware that it was um <clears throat> Yes, bandits were boyfriend. We prefer soldiers, but sure, bandits. Well, regardless, it's been 200 something years. Whoever did that, whoever's responsible, they're long gone. That doesn't heal wounds. <laughs> True. You're not wrong. But, I guess I'd like to try and heal them myself. I have you at least, Barra. Well, that's really all I need. Jesus Christ, your fucking optimism's gonna make me sick. Oh. How I've missed your obliviousness. <laughs> Good question. Uh, what what does the word optimism mean? You'll find out eventually. Is it an insult? I'm going to. He, no. he asked optimism, right? In the context. He asked what optimism means, or did he ask what obliv uh, oblivious means? He asked what optimism means. Okay, I sorry, it didn't process in my brain correctly. She just turns and looks at him and goes, "Optimism is that even in the face of all logic." You still think everything's gonna work out just fine, and that all that matters in the end is fucking friendship and love and happiness and rainbows. Well, when you put it that way, not really, but... Well, I don't really see myself in that too much, but... I mean, I spent so long with the curse, and now... He points over at Bara. Everything's worked out in the end. Yippee. We're By the way, in the end. you never did say what you were going to wish for. She kind of bites back a smirk and just goes, You'll find out. And then you hear Corcus pipe up and go, All right, guys, uh, keep your heads low. We're almost at the top, all right? I think you're the one who has to keep your head low, sir. Ah, well, that's where you're wrong. My head's always low. <sighs> did you just make a fucking height joke? Yes, indeed. He did. I hate to say it, but it was actually pretty fucking good. All right. Oh, boy. All right. And right as he says that, you guys kind of, uh, first Caleb's head peeks up over the top, and then the rest of you kind of follow shortly after as the lift reaches the top. And you see across uh, this small plaza, there seems to be a loon standing over, like, a chained-up person. And it looks to be Canary, who is very unconscious. Oh, for Wait, I wanted sake. to say, I'm pretty sure my disguise stays for an hour, regardless of whether or not I'm... Oh yeah, it doesn't need concentration. Yeah. Fucking nice. So, I just look like a... Is it an old man? <laughs> yeah, you see a loon chaining up a, uh, a large old man. Fucking hell. Uh, I'm going to walk over to loon, ask. and I'm going to grab her on the shoulder and just go, What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Disguise about that it's a vampire. And she's going to use Moonbeam. Use Moonbeam to undo the, uh, the image. Uh, I guess that'll work. Just kind of based on how Moonbeam functions, kind of like that. Yeah. So use a... A dietary form of uh, moonbeam. 
to scrub away most of or to scrub away the disguise and it turns back into canary. Jesus Christ. I mean at least as long as she's chained up she shouldn't be a problem, right? Hopefully. More importantly, what the fuck are you doing Seems here? Like she made a pact. A, a pact with, with what? With a person that I'm not too fond of. Uh, okay. For... Bully for you then? I. What the fuck are you doing up here? I told you and the fucking druid we don't want you up here. I keep slipping into British, fuck. Yeah, I don't listen to you. Yeah, I can get, kind of get the sense that you don't listen to anyone, and it's kind of pissing me off. Good for you. Bitch. Well, you've... You've got the fucking vampy bitch, so... Anyways, I'm going to go find... I'm going to go find fate. And murder the shit out of them. Just stay out of my fucking way. You four, five, I can't fucking count. Let's go. Alright, let's get to this. And hope he, uh... Didn't go straight back to here. Yeah, whatever. I mean, better than dealing with more gods that want to kill each other. Fuck gods. Uh, See, Loon, are you going to follow the group to the top of the tower? She's she's going to go up a different way. Uh, this. I guess there's multiple. There's a main staircase that's quite short. You're like right beneath the top floor right now, and then there's there's some lifts like those uh, little wheelie ones that like single people sit on, and like they ride them up, like a ski lift, those kind of things. I'm I'm taking the main staircase, so. I don't know if anyone else wants to follow. Main stairs. Following. No, Mars. No. Please. <laughs> no. She could just take the lift. No. <laughs> work spot. Mars just asked me if they could use like mold earth to Fortnite up the side, and I'm like, his building is there. <laughs> just use the lift. So anyway, uh, Loon goes towards one of those lifts. And the rest of the party goes towards the stairs. Seems like a pretty good spot for us to take a quick bathroom break, if anybody wants to do that. Potty break, potty break. Yes, please. Alright, let's go. We'll be We're... back, chat. Where's <laughs> the RP <DRP> screen? <laughs> Hello again, chat. We are back. I'm just gonna hand it straight over to Makeshift, and we're gonna get this bitch going. Word. So as you all ascend to the next level, via either the stairs or the lift on the side, uh, you encounter what looks to be this pretty well-made, and uh, it seems like a lot of care was put into keeping this place way up at the top uh, in very good condition. The stonework is stellar, practically, in a city for this, uh, this stature. But it seems like there's this kind of observatory structure near the back of the building. It's not particularly large, but there's certainly a good few guards that are inside of it, or that are out front just kind of meandering around. We're kind of just armed individuals. It's not only guards in the, in the city. And you also see like a few civilians that kind of like, there's like one or two entering and like one or two leaving. So I'm just, it seems like entry is simple enough. I'm just gonna walk in, calm-like, and enter the building. 
you see a, a few guards are like making eye contact or looking your way and like they seem to be whispering something they've got a problem they can say it to my face otherwise I'm entering the building gotcha you keep walking and Loon is kind of right alongside you guys oh, I assume Loon you're walking into the, the main building right yeah word So, as you're walking into the main building, you see a few people. Uh, it seems like there's just one couple who are sitting near this altar over at the back of the building who are, like, finishing up praying. And uh, they, they seem to, like, finish whatever prayer they were doing. They, like, stand up and start to, like, walk away. As they see the whole group behind them, they give you, like, a pretty wide berth. I'm just going to keep walking. I'm just looking for... I assume I know what I'm looking for, right? I asked that last session what we're going for, right? Oh, yeah. You know that you're looking for an item called the Finger of Fate. Cool. So I'm looking for a finger. You you quite clearly see a finger up on that altar. Cool. And you also see around this whole room, and especially up near the altar, there seems to be a lot of ladybugs kind of swarming around near the altar and the staircase. It seems like they really like chilling out near this area. Uh, I am going to walk up to the altar and attempt to grab the finger. Gotcha. You walk up the stairs in the side and everybody put down your tokens on this map. Oh, dear God. You enter from the south, the altar's at the north. Did the grid work this time? I manually lined it up. Oh, nice. 10 out of 10. I want it to look nice. It looks very nice. I'm proud. There we fucking go. Finally. Oh shit, there's two. <laughs> Fuck. I didn't God mean to, damn it, not I again. One. I it was, struggles. <laughs> I keep remembering I don't have a token for Corcus. Rip. Make him tiny. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, I just had to. I just had to click the link. Okay, we're good. Just a second while I go grab the one that I usually use. I. It's here somewhere. I know it is. Actually, probably pretty far up. Oh, yeah, he's probably on one of the maps now that I think about it. There you go, Mars. Uh, I, I think. Uh... Khaled's a bit small. <laughs> oh my god, I just went to the auction house map and I remembered I used this like. <laughs> Hang on. I used, uh. This gnome. A little gnome man. Which is actually more accurate than the one I was using. Oh my and god! <laughs> he's standing near the group. Come down here. Oh, wait. There you Where are. are we? Uh, what you said, you were walking along the length of this, so I assumed you're all pretty close to the altar at this okay, point. Cool. I I'm, up, I'm up here. So. Nah. Oh, yeah. Fuck off. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Mania's pretty far ahead, so. Oh, Word. here's Johnny for you, by the way. Oh, I just grabbed him. Nice. Perfect. I'm fast. Yeah. I'm fast as Johnny, fuck. Corcus and Car are there. Bara. Then... Did I not say Bara? You said Kara. You said Kara. <laughs> oh, I thought I said Corcus and Bara. <laughs> no. <laughs> I 
promise I did not choose the name on purpose to be messy. Mess <laughs> you up like that. I promise. Don't worry. I, I remember the process of picking the names. <laughs> yeah. And now, as you uh sort of reach down and try and grab at the finger, it uh, slides away as you try and grab it. Fuck her. Uh, I'm going to, like, lean forward and try to grab it again. Like, you know how when you try to lean forward and grab an egg that's, like, rolling off the counter? Like that. Mm -hmm. You do that, and it once again slides away from you more. Well, this is bullshit. Uh, I want to grab it again. I want to keep trying. This bitch be annoying. You reach towards it again, and it kind of, like, slides a different direction to get away from your hand. I want to smack it with my axe. <laughs> you, you whip out your axe, and you try and attack it, and your axe cuts down into the altar, and it misses the finger as it once again slides out of the way. Fucking hell. She turns, like, begrudgingly and looks at Loon and goes... All right, Miss I know everything. Know how to grab that? You have the other two pieces. Yeah. Who has the other two pieces? I need them. I found it. Uh, I'm gonna say Caleb was just carrying the okay, cool. the uh, the core, the piece of the God of Fire, since they could probably easily carry it without being bothered. Fire. I found your uh, leak, by the way. You found my what? The, 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 the leak. Oh, you <laughs> found the secret leak! <laughs> oh, yeah. The secret yeah. leak. The secret leak. I found the news. Nice. Anyway, um... She looks at Khaled and just goes, Well, if you screw me over on this, I swear to God, I will chase you down and I'll kill you. Go ahead. Give her the stuff. To be fair, this whole tower might be destroyed. I do not care. I could not make myself care any more than I do right now. Which is none. Correct. She places the other two objects next to the bone. You do that. Placing down the uh, molten core thing that came from the moving city. And the kind of electrified bone next to the finger. This isn't all this is, it's not all of the pieces to the puzzle, but it should be enough considering fate was the main perpetrator of the crime. What fucking crime? May they all give up a piece of themselves to seal Celeste. Uh, okay, then fucking unseal her then. She like shoots a beam at the objects and they just start a humming. You do that. And as you do that, Canary. You see, you can see them kind of, as you're waking up from your delirious state of uh, lots of pain and a sleep spell. You see that at this altar in this seemingly church-looking area you've woken up in, it seems like they're doing something at the altar. It seems it seems like whatever's going on, things are not going according to plan for you. Mm. Then things seem to slow down again. And the ladybugs, they seem to be the only thing that's moving again. And then, seemingly, time starts to stop. 
until everything is still once more. And in your chained up state, I assume you're still sitting around because I think I see your player token. I just put her down. Oh, I don't know where she's supposed to be. Yeah, I'll, I'll assume you're like propped up against that wall there. And so, as you're laying there, you once again see that uh, that marble stone bodied uh, being His silhouette appears from around a split in this, like reality from in front of you. And again, you hear him speak. Ah, you are so very close, Canary. My hopes for you were so high. But you can still finish this. You can still regain my favor in the favor of the eyes of eternity itself. Now, one last task. And you see him kind of very gently snap his fingers and a noise doesn't seem to come from it. But you feel the chains on you loosen and you're able to wiggle through them. Now, his back is turned. Step forward. Embrace your fate. Boy. I just kind of get up. She doesn't talk to him. Um. So time slowed down, right? Time time is stopped. Time is stopped. Who knows for how long though, right? I don't know if I have enough time to reach him before time starts again. People see me and they start intercepting my plan. So I am going to Fade see oh I'm gonna greet her invisibility myself. I only have a minute. But I only need about five seconds, <laughs> so... Okay, greater invisibility, I like it. Yeah. And you hear Fate call out to you, as you... Well, not really call out, you hear Fate speak to you and go, Good. Preparing for the unexpected. But you have nothing to fear. Simply step further forward. Sink your teeth into him and take his life from him. I start approaching Corcus. You do that. Strut in your stuff, you approach Corcus, frozen in time. Beow. 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 All right. He's still frozen in time. I take my claw, or wait, my left hand's gone. Okay, so my right hand. I take my right hand, and with my left, or with my mouth, I'm going to tilt my head to the left to bite into his artery, and with my right hand, I'm going to take my nails to claw through his throat so that his throat's completely just gaped open. There's no chance of him surviving this. You do that, and with a feeling that feels like you're kind of moving through water because time is all, like all the air around you is also frozen in time, but kind of unfreezing as you move through it. As you do that, you reach and do exactly as you just said, moving his head to the side and digging into the side of his neck. You sink your teeth into him. Do you drink his blood? Oh, I drink the hell out of his blood. For Cress! <laughs> and immediately you feel uh, like your arm's starting to be restored. The, the wound's healed up pretty well, and already you can feel like the bones and sinews starting to reform. And then, as you're standing there, you start to see Cress's memories flood into you. As you start to see that his name was actually just a long time ago. Corcus, uh, his original name was really just Corcus Teeman. And 
you start to see his most prominent memories come to the surface. You see just this campfire scene where he seems to be sitting down with some, it looks to be humans, and another halfling. Also, I want to emphasize his name is pronounced T Min. I, I put it in the name generator. I'm only now realizing the. Uh... Corcus semen. <laughs> Come. He tea posing. And around the campfire, you can see the one halfling that you recognized from before, who was Willerin. And he seems a lot more high spirited. Uh, still has kind of that air of a dangerous person about him, but he's smiling, you know, sitting around this campfire, and he's smiling at Corcus. And you also recognize from Corcus's memories the faces of an individual he called Merwick, uh, another one he called Finrin. And Merwick. Oh, and the last one being a warrior he called Gobin. And they all seem to be happily sitting around a campfire. And just, you know, telling stories, the usual banter. Nice adventuring party. And the scene starts to shift to a much darker memory. As you recall, the most tragic moment in his life. As during a dungeon raid, they went, they got a little too ahead of themselves. Got pretty deep into a dungeon. And eventually when push came to shove, and the forces against them were too great. Corcus, who at the time was really just kind of this underwhelming rogue who wasn't really nearly as high level as his uh, party members, who were far more experienced than him in combat, he was more so there as kind of a mascot and a chef for the party. But inevitably, his comrades were willing to sacrifice themselves to save their dear friend and get him out of the dungeon. Not knowing that Wolorin would also be able to make it out of the dungeon as well, due to his uh, sharp luck and his own skills at escaping situations like this. And then his life went on to be one of a vagabond, wandering about the world looking for any sort of purpose he could and trying to keep away from the bad memories of his shortcomings. Until one day he bumped into our party. And a slight spark of the joy that he once felt started to come back to him. Looking at all his comrades who resembled humans, at least somewhat, and to a degree reminded him of his old comrades. He genuinely did feel pretty happy traveling with all of you. Oh, and most importantly, you are very clearly able to tell that never was there a point in time in which he was going to betray you. <laughs> I fucking knew you were gonna say that. I knew no matter what he said about Quarkus, you were not gonna give a fuck, you absolutely stubborn vampire. Fucking Christ. And so, Listen, you are now. He's Franken so many people to survive the thousands of years she's been alive. Everybody has a story. Mm hmm. All right. And yours is about to come to an end. But you don't. You don't piss off Canary and live. Oh, and I'm about to. If she was going oh. to, if he was going to survive and make the wish for all his friends to be back, she, since she blames him for Cress's death, she would have hunted down him, his lineage, and all his friends' lineage and start from the bottom up, killing the young ones first. She's yeah, it's a really good one thing I'm going to try to attack this bitch as soon as time is and back. You survive. You have to okay. kill her. Oh. If you don't want... Pain. Okay. I'll just, kill you. So anyway. She has okay. no no beef with you guys. She wants Cress back. Sucks to suck. You're going to die before that me. happens. Feel free. So Feel anyway. Free to try. As, <laughs> Happily. As you are in the midst of stopped time... Uh, and you kind of come off that high of, like, drinking blood and, you know, reality in front of you is starting to look a bit more like reality you were just in. You're feeling a lot better. You just had some blood to drink. And it occurs to you, 
Give me a perception check. Twelve. Twelve. After looking in the direction of uh, the pedestal where Loon was performing the ceremony, you notice she's no longer she's no longer looking at the pedestal, and now she's looking over towards uh, like your direction, and almost it's like her eyes move to look behind you, kind of. And you hear the god of fate speak once again, and go, Now, Canary, you have done well, so long as that half soul remains within you, all will be right. Wait, you cut out, you cut out, you cut out. I did? Yeah, yeah. Very little, I could understand it, but yeah, you did cut out. Gotcha. I'll start back from, uh... Canary, you did well. She said, Ah, you did well. Now, it is time to remove you from this place. No, no, Louis, do something! And he reaches out his hand Mars, towards you. Mars, do something! You. Mars, do something! Don't let her leave! And as, as he's reaching his hand over towards you... I am doing to do something. Oh, I love you, thank you. Loon. What are you gonna do? Since you are now looking at them as this is occurring. She's going. To. Fucking. Yeah. Fucking? Here? Now? No thanks. She's going to disappear for a second. I don't have control over her. Oh no. Why don't you why don't you have the control? Hold on, I got this. Oh, that. did your token disappear? I I got her. Hold on. Uh do 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 Yeah, it's cause I fucked up. Anywho. Y you should have control now, Mars. Try it. Grab her. I cannot control Loon. Uh refresh your page. Is there a refresh button for us? No? Okay, cool. I still don't draw her. Okay. Well, what? I do want to say I'm still invisible. Anyways. <laughs> Time is still stopped. I'm invisible. Good, good for you. Yep. Just saying. Have, have yeah, fun with that. Loom? Good for you. Where's Loom's character? Right, she's right up here. I don't know why she's not able to move. She's this one yeah. right here. Pinky. Yeah. Right click, <laughs> edit, maybe. Yeah, she's already in the edit. Oh boy! Thank you, Roll Twenty. This is a phenomenal software. <laughs> uh, click here. Uh, edit in this. Yeah, it says you have control of it. What the? What, bleh, 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 bleh. Oh, I cannot. God. Okay, just tell us where you want her to move. We'll do it. Yeah, let's just do that. She's going right here. Okay. Mm, blue. Mm, blue. Right, go right, right here. Okay, cool. Have fun. Going kind of between the God of Fate and well, Canary. I also, I also don't have a... Technically, no. you did die. And she Spear. pierces her hand through Canary and grabs Carcass his soul. You, you do can that. see her? Oh, yeah. Loon is oh, yeah, that reminds me. You don't know who Loon is from the main campaign. No. Because this is crossing over. Because uh, Loon is uh, one of the denizens. 
which are these uh, beings that come directly from the outer gods. So she's kind of an equivalent of the god of fate in terms of like power. She's extremely powerful. Like more so than Khaled. Kind of an image just for like an arm, because that would that serve the purpose of showing this god off. Uh there's no arm thing. So I'm hand. just gonna Sure, it's all just freehand with my mouse. Yeah. <laughs> Free hit. What? Hand. Hand. You just... Oh my god. <laughs> that definitely I... looks like a hand. I need a better one. <laughs> Damn, he's insulting my art. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just... There's a thing there. There's a... Eh. Eh. This is way too bulky of an arm. Eh, that's a hand. Does he skip leg day? <laughs> I guess so. He doesn't need to use his legs. So, sure, you, you see an arm here, that's even worse than the one Briar drew. <laughs> Actually, no, that, that's so <laughs> much better, holy shit. Mine kind of looked like a peacock out, or a penis. It's sticking out of this, like, steam in reality that seems to defy logic from every angle you look at it. And you're able to walk, but uh, he's still able to move his arm. I don't know what that what that character is, Mars. She's going to look at fate. I brought you into this world, I can sure as well take you out of it. And then... He's going, she's going to beam fate. Gonna beam him. Is that what he said? Gonna beam. Oh, beam. beam. She is pulling out the chancla. <laughs> oh my god. The chancla. Which spell do you use? I should probably ask. Or like, which attack do you do? Please actually just smack him with your boot. That'd be funny. Wouldn't do shit, but it'd be funny. I'm just going to use the same damage as the bow. But it's like Word. a giant beam of light. You do that. Oh, that is the wrong character. <laughs> yes, indeed. Rip. Okay, there you go. And so, Canary, you see this kind of beam projectile coming from Loon. And she shoots towards an area behind you, presumably where the God of Fate's reaching towards you from. And it, like, when it hits whatever's behind you, well, the God of Fate behind you, you hear him wince immediately as the pain strikes at him and... It seems it's actually causing him quite a bit of harm. Then briefly after, you see that uh, there seems to be a lot of like brilliant white feathers kind of fluttering around the air in here that you didn't see before. And now it seems the time is starting to flow again. And everybody is now cognizant of what's going on as they hear a voice they've never heard before go, Ah! <sighs> You filthy creature. To think that you would turn your hand against the most beloved creation of eternity. You. I will dash you from this existence. It is time that I correct my, fa my faults 
here and now. And you see that, uh, that arm kind of like slurp back into like the crack in reality. And uh, a very large wing that seems to have been protruding from thin air also kind of shlorps back into the <laughs> crack in air. Shlorps. And he just like pulls himself back through it. Uh, and all of you see Corcus uh, fall to the ground unconscious. And you see Loon holding something kind of like wispy in her arm. Um, Canary's still in, or is Canary dead? Canary's very invisible. Okay, that's what I thought, because it's like, while Loon can see her, I cannot, so. Uh, I'm going to ready my axe as I see Corcus fall down, bleeding profusely, I assume. Because it's fucking- Oh no, he's not- He's not he's bleeding? Not bleeding. He, got, he got blood dry, basically. Then what the fuck is his throat doing? Uh, it has a little bit of blood out, but he's not profusely bleeding. He oh. just got all his blood drank. Well, damn. Jesus Christ, you drink a lot of shit. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna turn around, look at fucking Corcus, and just be like, The fuck did you just do? More directed at Loon, I can't see Canary. There is an invisible vampire in front of me. Deal with her while I'll fix Corcus. I... <laughs> Mania looks back to where Canary was. Looks back, um... Looks back at her, it just goes... Fucking hell. Uh, and then I'm going to jump off this little platform that's right here. Why am I drawing still? Make sure to help me. Boop. Hang on. Yeah. I got it. You're up on the, the top here? Yeah. You're I'm still gonna... selecting drawings, I think. I have to go back to the cursor. Am I now? Really? <laughs> I'm going to jump off of the platform and uh, start mm -hmm. walking towards Loon, ready to smack the shit out of her. Also, you guys are really far away from Corcus. Let's just start that. Uh, yeah. I'm going to step over Corcus's corpse, and I'm going to swing at Loon but still have that space between us, because where Canary is. In her direction? Uh, give me a attack roll at disadvantage. I'm gonna have to do some math here, hold on. My... Even with disadvantage, I do some decent shit. Uh, yep. <laughs> oh no! Fuck off! Fuck disadvantage, man. I hate this. I got a fucking 20. Okay. That's not terrible, at least. That's it's an 18 rather than a fucking nat 26. Fuck you. <laughs> and then... Uh, Canary, do you also stay standing there? Mm, no. Okay, where do you where do you move to? You can also delete your token as you are currently invisible, and that'll help the roleplay. And you can just tell me I'll where you it. move to in DMs. First of all, because I'm a little bit confused with the whole warring and burring thing, is that wish contraption put together or no? Is it still uh, living or not incorporated? Good question. Uh, the parts are still on the pedestal right now. It seems like Loon partially finished. Like, there's, it's like there's a glow coming from him. Mm. I'm trying to think what Canary's initial reaction would be with the whole gods fighting. You also just had you also just had a person stand behind you after moving through stopped time and pull a soul out of you with their bare hand without dealing damage to you. She probably would have she wouldn't be standing right now. She would have fallen back. She'd be like, hold on. Uh where can I where can I show you where she'd probably fall to? 
<laughs> I'm trying to find how to do the little bobble thingy, the little circle. You uh, hold down a click, although everybody's gonna see that. It's like um. You can just type to me where you yeah, 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 yeah. where you move, like two spaces down and one to the right, something like that. Clickety click click click. You are now standing in that new position. I would I would have fallen. <laughs> like Oh. You've now <laughs> fallen yeah, into that position. I, I, I'm sitting on my butt. <laughs> like what? <clears throat> yes. And uh do you do anything with your action now that uh you now just watched uh Caleb swing an axe right at where you were standing? I am crawling away. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. my god, not Kaylin. Many of all the names to keep track of. Crawling away. I am crawling to be. That's where I'm trying to get to. word you do that uh the one yes that one yes okay word uh bara you uh you said you wanted to cast a spell oh bara My Purple. bad, I was muted. Do you hear me? I was yes, I hear you. I, I forgot I was muted because I didn't want the typing to be heard. Um, there you go. Yeah. After uh, watching Mania jump down and blind trusting Loon because vampire invisible words strike fear into me, uh, <laughs> I want to do a spike growth around. Word. The, uh, uh, draw, that do be draw out the uh, 20 foot radius cube. I uh, growl radius, a 20 foot radius. Uh, on a point within range, 20, 20 foot radius, that's... on a point that you choose within range, uh, draw that out with like a square. That's four four of the grid squares, just so you know. Oh, oh okay. Thank and that's you. the I... radius, not the diameter. I, you guys have me confused. <laughs> four squares, pick them. Oh. I'm just going to show you. <laughs> Corner there. Uh, one, two, three, four, one, two. Three, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That would be an area of about this size. Except I drew a circle because I'm a clown. Okay, I'm confused. Still. Eh. How do I delete? Just a moment. Spike growth covers an area this size. And I will delete the circle to stop any confusion. So you can center that on a point like, say, this square would be centered like right, uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I misdrew this because I'm still an absolute clown because it needs to be one longer. <laughs> that size. And that'll be centered on this point right here. Is that clear? You got cut off at the very end. A square this size would be centered on this point right here. Of this this little orange square. A little me. Okay. Does that does that make sense? Yes. So, so where do you would it make it up to the pedestal? <laughs> where do you center it? I, I... Just draw like a little square around a point you want to center it on. There would probably be best to center it on. Where? Oh my god. Do I have to make myself right fucking... You, you, you whispered it. I couldn't hear where you said you wanted to put it. Here. <laughs> Where'd I have to say? Like, 
Oh, you what? put it. Oh, you put it up on the pedestal. Okay. Yeah. What did you think I was putting it? I thought you were trying to put it right where Mania just attacked. That's no, what I was thinking. That this would one possibly of these hurt Mania. I'm not stupid enough. Okay. So you cast growth on that area. Okay. Yes. Actually, I can just click and move the square. <laughs> Yoink. Yoink. And I actually drew two squares because, again, certified clown moment. <laughs> and this goes right there. So there's now spikes covering the area. Mm. You do that. And you do not hear the sound of a vampire wincing in pain. Uh. Same. But clever thinking, though. Mm -hmm. And... <laughs> uh, Loon, what were you doing with uh, Corcus? Oh, yeah. Just casually She's holding a soul? She's going to take body. And then she's going to heal the body. You do that. Give me a... And then she's going to shove the soul back in the body along with something else. Word. What's the something else you shove in his body? The joke is, I know what it is. <laughs> Her pee pee. <laughs> so, as you all see. Seed. And she yeah. shoves her seed in him! As you see Loon uh, kneeling over Corcus, you see his neck kind of heal up a bit. And she jams her arm into his back. And he kind of like coughs and heaves a little bit as he seems to. Get the air back in his lungs. And then she also jams, like her arm seems to glow with this bright golden light, and she jams it back into him again. And that seems to. Uh, some Something happened to him. And then she, and then she's going to pour energy into him. And then she once again pushes her fist into his back. And what seems to be uh, electrocuting him, or uh, he just just uh, 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 as he then uh, gasps back to life and sits up straight, and goes, ah, 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 "Good Lord, what's what's going on?" Ah, ooh. Why, why is everybody looking at me? Uh, uh, come again? Uh, oh. Sucks to suck, bitch. <laughs> she just fucked. What? She said sucks to suck, bitch. What? Oh my god. But he looks between Loon and then back at Quarkus, and then back at Loon, and then back at Quarkus, and just goes, Not only did I bring back the person that you wanted to kill the most, but I also made him a god. And as you say what, that... you can just go making gods? The fuck? Yeah, that's Loon's old job. And as you hear those words echo out throughout the room, that altar with the, uh, the components on it is starting to, starting to shake a lot. It's almost like the room is starting to tremble. Minia just turns back to the altar and is confused. And Canary, do you want to tell me what, to, what do you do with your movement at this point in time? It's actually going to be a spell. <laughs> Oh? 
Just saying, you guys attacked her first, so... <laughs> but... <clears throat> okay. You can do a spell? Yeah, hold on one second. I'm not sure how many slots I have left for this. Mm. That's the only reason that I'm hesitating between two. Do you know how many I have? Have we been keeping track? Uh, you... You do need to keep... You probably still have, I've like, been doing pretty one... Long ones. <laughs> after everything, you probably have at least one first level spell slot left, based on the spells mm. you've cast today. Honestly, yeah, that sounds about right, given by what your stuff. Hold on one sec. Gotcha. And while that's going on, uh, you all see uh, a large bird once again flying through this opening behind the altar. Uh, and you once again see it transform into Elric. Oh, Seems like he was uh, making use of the giant eagle form quite a bit. As he lands, he goes, oh. So I'm late, everybody. What did I miss? Uh, ow. That hurt a lot. As he lands feet first onto a bunch of spikes and takes 2d4 damage. I'm debating. Because I know what Canary would do, but I don't want to do it to you. Does that make sense? Do it. I know it. No, you really don't know. You don't know if... how bad this is. I really Canary don't think you can take out somebody who has twice your fucking health bar. Do it. Oh, it's not you. I'm not oh. just talking about me. <laughs> I whatever you plan on Who are doing. What you worried about? Oh, you're gonna cast sleep. Okay. Mm -hmm. You roll for the roll for sleep. Or like show me the, the points, which is low. So it's low five d eight. Oh, no, no, no. I rolled it at one. If you look at the thing, it says 26. I rolled it at one, I swear. Hold on. Oh, oh, you got a total of 26. Yeah, okay. So you roll 5d8. Uh, is there anybody in the party who is at 26 HP or lower? No. No. Okay. So. I have fucking 84 <laughs> health points. I don't think you can hurt me. It's not you. <laughs> it's not you. Then why are the you casting a spell that goes around so, a bunch of people? So here's so here's what occurs. Here's here's what occurs. Uh, Canary then becomes visible, standing here next to this pillar, uh, and you hear them speak the verbal components of a spell, and nothing happens. Where was she casting it? Where where did we hear her voice come from? You you see her standing right here. Hold on, I, I... next to this pillar. Okay, right there. Cool. Yep. Uh. Once again, I look at Loon, look back at Corcus, look back at Loon, look back at Corcus, hear her do the fucking spell shit, and immediately I see just absolute blood red. I am so pissed off. She points her axe at Canary and just goes, I should have fucking killed you the moment I laid eyes on you. And I'm going to attempt to make my way over and strike her with my axe. Okay, use your movement. Uh, how much movement do I have again? I don't think I have enough to make it. She will One, two, probably... Three, four, five, six. That's six spaces. You have the exact amount of movement you need. I have the exact amount of movement? Let me check. Yeah. Yeah, actually I do, because I have I have 40 feet, uh, 40 movement speed. So I'm going to walk up to her, <laughs> try to smack her with the axe. I am pissed. <laughs> Don't worry, lovesick, it's not just you she's going to try and kill, because Jesus Christ, everyone's pissing her off. Here we go. 
Oh, Jesus. Um... Okay, give me an attack roll. Math people, what's I 8 plus 6? Ignore that. Ignore that. I'm trying to put it away. Math people, gotcha. 8 plus 6. 8 plus 6, that's 14. 14, thank you. That's 14. Uh, Canary, what is your current health? Depends. Did the drinking the blood heal me? Because I have my uh, arm back. I'll say it mainly regrew a chunk of your arm and stopped the bleeding, but it did also give you 2d4 healing. Or it closed the wound, I should say. But it gave you 2d4 healing. So let me roll for that real quick. I'm trying to do the of where I was before. I think you're at like 8 health and you gain 5 health. Uh, so 13. I'm at 13. I think... I think they did exactly third. Yeah, didn't you just do 13 damage? Me? Yeah. I rolled a 14 attack roll. I haven't rolled my damage yet. Oh, does that beat your armor class? She has an 11. That that definitely beats her armor class. Mm -hmm. Okay, roll for damage. Cool. Uh, let's see. What, how much damage does my axe do again? Oh, by the way, I still have the, the Goddess of War's thing tied around my axe, right? Yes. What does that do again? It uh, is a damage boost, but it also kind of allows you to cut through things, otherwise you wouldn't be able to cut through. Gotcha, okay, cool. Okay, um, I forgot my damage dice real quick. Give me just a second. God, this is why I should... Give me just a second. I genuinely forgot my damage dice. It's a battle axe, so I think 2d6. I think it's more than 6. I thought it was 8. It's my d12. 12? Uh oh. 1d12. 1d12? I think I'm pretty sure she's right. I just want to check. She's right. Okay. Uh, where is my 12? Where is my 12? Sip my water a little bit. I forgot which one. The, this is the 12. Okay, hold on. Because uh, 1d12 plus 3. Yeah, so Josh is saying uh, 1d12 for a great axe, and battle axe is 1d10. It's a great axe. Thank you, Asha. 13. I got a 10. Fortnite battle axe. <laughs> Fortnite battle axe. I just shit out my ass. <laughs> Booted up my PC. <laughs> Canary! <laughs> Roll for the damage. At 13, oh. I got a 10, and I have a plus 3 on her. Oh, that's, yep, exactly 13 I damage. Uh, Shit. Canary, you I was hoping I dropped do that to much. zero HP and you drop unconscious. Knocking you up, bitch. <laughs> I'm sorry. Nope. Did, did you say knocking you up? I'm not getting not, you up. Not getting you up. <laughs> oh, knocking you not, up. <laughs> no, we're not, not doing that to a corpse. No. Not, oh my gosh, purple rape is not okay. No, not no, no. Getting you up. Okay, okay make sure we mark this so that makes sure you can cut it out in the VOD. Thank you. Miss Heard. Okay, Briar, what did you say? Uh, I didn't intend to do that much damage. I was really hoping it would be a low roll, but okay. I even did a shitty, like, dice shake. Okay, well, um, she swings her axe down into, I'm gonna say her, yeah, her chest. Uh, she swings her axe down into her chest, and then, uh, like, holds it there for a second, and then puts her boot right in, like, her midsection and kicks her off her axe, so she pulls her axe back. And she just goes, oh, I would have fucking done this on my own. And she turns back to the party, and she just scans them, and... I don't know how to describe it, but she's she just looks like if you touch her, she's gonna kill you. And she stalks back up to the podium and is just like, get the fuck out of my way. And I'm going to Oh, there's spikes growth there. Um she she walks right to the edge of the spike growth and she turns and looks at Mara and just goes, Get this shit out of my way and stay out of my way. Do you do it? Yeah. Okay. Good girl. <laughs> the spike rope disappears. Wonderful. Now I'm going to stalk up to the podium, and I'm going to put my hands on it, 
And I'm gonna make sure that everything stays on the shaking podium. Word. And so, uh, the light from the podium and, like, these objects, they seem to, uh, to direct themselves over towards Kaled. And they kind of focus this beam of light towards her. And when they do, it seems like Caleb starts to separate into two separate entities, where one of them is kind of shrinking down into a more regular-sized humanoid shape, and the other is kind of being pulled away. Like, you ever see, you know, Spider-Man 3 when he's taken off the Venom suit? A little bit like that. Where, like, uh, this, this outer layer is kind of being pulled away, and it's taking on the form of a dragon. Oh, and shit. after a moment of that happening, a massive burst of energy goes by as a huge gust of wind sweeps across all of you. And once you're all able to open your eyes back up, you see that the whole roof is completely gone. I forgot to put down Elric. Uh, he's standing right here. Cool. If he tries to stop and her, I she's gonna fucking put an axe in him again. A huge gust of wind goes by all of you, and when you open your eyes up, you see the ceiling is now just gone, and you can actually catch a few glimpses of what seems to be like large boulders from the roof, like toppling off into the distance as they fall towards the ground. And above you, you see the massive and imposing figure of a dragon leering down at all of you. What kind? What kind of dragon? Uh, a massive ancient red dragon. Hot! Oh my god, can I seduce the dragon? Uh, give me a <laughs> No, wait, I remember what you threatened, never mind. Oh my god. <laughs> and so, it looks down at the party, and it speaks a simple, a simple question to all of you. What is your desire? Manina's Manina Manina Manina's kind of uh stunned at watching this fucking huge ass dragon uh show up and she's just kind of like watching it like holy fuck I've never seen a dragon I'm a little turned on right now You do that. Elric also looks up and goes, Wow. Are you doing anything? His mouth is wide open. You can see a fly possibly could go in there. <laughs> and as he, as you're all like surprised by the sight of this dragon, you hear Elric speak up for a moment. And go. Ah. Oh, I could undo my curse. Then. Probably die. Oof. <sighs> Please don't do that to me. Not tonight. I know I've been a bitch, but come on. And he. He calls up to the dragon and goes. I wish on the night that Bara's hometown was destroyed. I was only a few minutes faster. Five minutes specifically. The dragon adjusts its gaze to look over at Delric, and seems to pause and contemplate his words for a moment. And it goes, So be it. And nothing seems to happen for a moment. What else? It speaks to the group. Mania steps forward. Uh, she takes Bloodborne and puts it... Um, I don't know the name, but she basically puts the blade down on the ground and kind of like kneels before this dragon and goes, I wish to be the goddess of war. I want that power. So be it. Fuck yeah. <laughs> and nothing happens quite yet. 
And then he speaks out again to the group. What else? Lara, you wanna you wanna wish for anything? I don't have any wish for her. I, I, I'm a wish for money. Wish for happen. a house. Wish for a horse. Wish to go no, back to Silidorus. It's a long trek. Yeah, but that'd be a good adventure for the two of them. Eh, fair point. <laughs> she really has no wish at the moment. And then you hear Corcus speak up after a long pause, and he goes, I... I want to have my old team back. All of my friends, I, I want them back to life. So we can travel together, together again. So be it. And then, with a mighty gust of wind from its wings, the dragon takes flight and seems to start flying off in the direction of some distant mountains. That was so cool! Ah! And then, as you're all standing around, uh, Bara and Johnny, you two begin to, like, fade, like, in, like, you start to become ethereal, and, like, the world around you is kind of, like, or you're disappearing from the world around you, as you can feel yourself being pulled to some other place. Uh... You can also see that Corcus is starting to fade as well. Uh... What? <laughs> and shortly after, Bara, you find yourself back in your old hometown. Uh, but it's no longer destroyed. You find yourself in the thriving community you once lived in. The buildings are intact, and though small, it's grown a bit since the past. And you're no longer in the tower, back in Silenoris. Corcus has also disappeared, and he's off doing who knows what now. Everybody else, you're still in the tower. What the fuck just happened? Well, if I had to guess, they are probably back in Silenoris right now. And Corcus, I have no idea where he went. Where do we meet him again? Uh, the, that trading federation that's somewhat near Voivod. Am I supposed to feel something now? Ah, uh, good question. Not certain. I mean, what did you go through when you became a god? Uh, a lot of emotional pain. Uh, that's about it. Well, fucking bring on the pain then! I can fucking take it! And she just kind of, like, raises everything to the ceiling and is just screaming around at the air. Mars? You, you there? Mar Mars? And so, once you start saying that... Does anyone notice something? You can all kind of feel this, like, grumbling in the ground. As the tower kind of feels to be trembling a bit. Fucking hell. She did say she was gonna destroy the fucking tower. Fuck. Still got enough eagle on you. That was it, Elric, asking if he's still got enough caca mode. Oh, yeah. Ah. Uh... Good question. I think I overlooked one issue. Wait, what's up, Lone? Celeste wanted to destroy the world. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that explains why all the original gods sealed them. 
Elric then turns and looks over towards them. Wait, did... Crap, I'm confused. Did Loon say that, or did Kayla just say that? Kayla's voice has a, a different resonance. Okay, yeah, Loon said that. At this point, Celeste is outside and there is a giant void in the sky. Fucking hell. So that's, that's, that's Caleb's other name, right? Yes. Word, just one Caleb sure. is Celeste, Celeste is Caleb. And you see that in the sky, as it seems like Caleb is uh, not having a good time, and they're creating some sort of very dangerous looking spell. And Elric calls over to Loon and goes, Uh, yeah, about that. Do you have any plan on how to stop that from happening? Well. Wow. Technically. Technically, she's just destroying this timeline. The what? Okay, then I'm gonna go down there and put an axe in her face. Then. You see there are branching timelines. We are, I think we are one of the branches that need trimming. Uh, slight problem with that. That means we're all probably going to die. Uh, any chance we can, you know, cram them into a different timeline or do anything to stop them, Moon? I think we have one option. Which is... He's looking back and forth between the Void and, uh, Loom. And then he realizes he's looking back and forth between Loon, the Void, Loon, the Void. And he looks down at the pedestal and remembers that he has three components of some of the most powerful gods in existence. And goes, oh, yeah. You see Elric reach forward, pick up the finger of fate, spin it around in his hand, look over at Celeste and throw it real hard like a dart. And as that happens, what? and hits Celeste, you see time stop again, and you hear the voice of fate call out once more. Now, your end is nigh for all of you. Oh, for fuck's sake. And from the point at which the finger made contact with Celeste, you see... Fate's arm pulls Celeste through a portal once again, or this kind of like split in reality. And then some other, like more arms seem to reach out, reaching across a very long distance from where he threw it. And they grab all of you as well. And they pull Loon, Elric, Mania, and. Uh, who else is standing in here right now? Corcus. Uh, Cork has disappeared. Oh, right. Uh, Canary's body is yeah, on the floor still. True, but I don't think he's going to grab a corpse. Cool, great. And he pulls you all through a portal. And I'm going to call that the end of the session. And thus, uh, the end of Path of Destruction. Woo! Oh, holy shit. What the? F Wait, what the fuck is that ending? I'm confused oh, now. You'll see over in Razavestia.
Oh no, does that mean that chat's gonna have to watch Rise of Vestia on Saturdays <laughs> at 6.30? Oh no! Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, man. Quick question, Makeshift. Uh, I'm curious, do Bara and Johnny still have the memory of the before? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> I, I better be seeing fanfics of what happens to Bar and Johnny after the whole path <laughs> of <the> destruction. <laughs> fanfics, chat. I demand them. I demand them now. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. If, if, you, if you at me on Twitter, uh, I wouldn't mind that at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, that was Untold Realm's Path of Destruction, the campaign finale. Holy shit. Nine campaigns of this bullshit. This was awesome. Thank you, everyone, for coming out and watching. A specific thank yous to Purple Rose VA, Lo VA Lovesick, Date Audios, and Riding Mars, and Quarrel Quadrangle, aka Makeshift. Thank you, all of you, so much for being here. I love this. I love you guys. This was so much fun. Um, with that, I, <laughs> uh, we will be having, uh, stuff on Tuesdays, but surprise, it's not going to be DM'd by Makeshift. It's going to be, be DM'd by me. Yeah, we got some cool if, stuff If y'all saw her uh, DMing during the uh, maze uh, session, <laughs> fucking on point, I look forward to it. Yeah, so <laughs> starting in a couple of weeks, keep track on my Twitter and you'll be able to uh, watch there, but starting in a couple of weeks, uh, we will be back with another mini, a mini campaign. Much smaller than this one, probably only four to five episodes. Um, but yeah, I'll be DMing a mini campaign on Tuesdays. Uh, keep an eye on my Twitter, because we are actually going to be looking for two more players. Um, so I will be putting something out about people who are interested in playing Untold Realms with us. It's going to be really cool. So yeah, we'll be playing that. Um, Rise of Vestia will be back this Saturday. Uh, it's gonna be fucking awesome. I'm really excited, especially for getting yoinked through an asshole of reality by fate. That's fun-ish. Aw, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, don't worry, Corona, I'll be posting it on my, You're um, on session 23 of Rise of Vestidia. Yeah, session 23. Um, don't worry, Corona, I will also be posting the interest form on my YouTube and my, um, my Discord server as well. So, yeah, I'm really excited. We're going to have some fun. Um, again, thank you to everyone. Thank you, you guys. Like, I'm, I'm talking to you guys in, in the Discord call right now. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this and playing some chaos with us. This was so much fun. Um, I hope Dade sees this later, but Dade, thank you. You were uh, wonderful to have around. You guys were amazing. So, uh, th thank you guys so much for being here. Y'all, Y'all are... Y'all are really great role players. Y'all are great teammates. Uh, I I um, hope to play with you guys again one day <laughs> in the future, or at well, the very I'll least see where you go. Yeah, I could be one of your players. <laughs> right. So yeah, I I hope to keep up and keep in touch with you. You guys were really amazing. So thank Me, you. I, thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for coming out to the finale of Path of Destruction. Thank you guys for supporting us. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for uh, donating. For those of you who did donate, um, there should be some UR art coming out soon. Uh, if the artist, uh, you know, life can stop kicking the artist that I hired. So um, other than that, thank you guys so much. It was wonderful to see you. It was wonderful to have you. And I hope to see you on Saturday at Rise of Vestia. And I hope to see you in a couple of weeks for the Blood Moon campaign. Thank you guys so much. Uh, have a wonderful evening. Goodbye. Bye. See you. Take care.